database normalization is a conceptual process which frequently proves difficult to grasp when you first encounter relational database systems. This presentation hopes to make normalization a bit more comprehensible. In your coursework to date, you have learned some defining functional characteristics of a good database, such as a good database actually contains all the data required to meet its purpose, and little but important things like it does not lose or corrupt your data. The process of database normalization helps to ensure that a database operates efficiently and is organized to protect the integrity of its data. So what is database normalization? Normalization is all about making sure that each datum in a database is only stored once and that the data is not duplicated. This is accomplished by breaking the database into multiple tables. Each table contains a series of data columns which are closely related to each other. This helps to ensure that we reduce or eliminate the duplication of data. But what's so bad about duplicate data? Duplicate data is not only inefficient, it causes data hygiene problems or inaccuracy in the computer data. If the same item of data exists in two or more places, each datum must be updated each place it exists. If for any reason the datum is not updated everywhere it exists, the data becomes inconsistent. In short, when the data does not match, we have an error. Such database errors are known as anomalies. If my data is inconsistent, it means you can't trust the data. That's bad. So what can go wrong? Well, I can fat finger data when I initially enter it. This is an insert anomaly. Or when changing data, I can forget to make sure that everything is consistent. This is an update anomaly. Oh yeah, I can inadvertently or mistakenly delete some data, a delete anomaly. Normalization prevents these kinds of errors. When you set out to design a database to store your data, you will quickly find that you need to keep track of a lot of information. Your users are going to want to utilize the database both for storing the actual data and for displaying that data in exactly the way they want to see it. Pretty quickly you will find yourself throwing data items into your tables and tables into your database and things can become really, really complex really, really fast. Normalization is a process that forces you to organize and simplify your tables. It turns out that simple tables are both efficient and easier to maintain. <laughs> Databases and database tables tend to work best under the KISS principle, keep it simple stupid. In practice, database normalization is a step-by-step -step process. The database community has developed a series of guidelines for ensuring that databases are normalized. These are referred to as normal forms and are numbered from 1 to 5. The first normal form is the lowest form of normalization. At each level of normalization, the guidelines become stricter. In practice, you're going to see the first, second, and third normal form. The fourth and fifth normal form are much less commonly utilized, and so I'm not going to discuss them in this video. You will need to know about the first, second, and third normal form. So let's get hands-on. Let's consider a database that supports an application used by a pet veterinarian boarding business. The data used to produce this invoice and fill in the various fields is stored in the database or calculated from data stored in that database. When designing or improving a database, start with how the user will view and interact with the data. Understand the user's interactions with forms, or input, and the report's output. You really got to understand this. What does your user want to see? What information will they need as part of their input responses and in their reports? Ask yourself, how might the data change in the future? Input forms and output reports are known as views. This invoice is a view of the data in the database. Consider if data for each invoice were to be contained in a single database table. Let's call it invoice. Hopefully you're going to see some issues right off. For example, there's a lot of duplicated data. Did you notice the insert anomaly? Procedures, costs, etc. might not match on update and insert. 
lots of anomalies here, like wrong pet to wrong order. We need to get a better handle on the information and organization of our customers, our pets, and our procedures. There are just too many line items. It's very confusing. Lots of potential problems here. Normalization reduces duplication and helps to prevent anomalies. In a relational database system, we use an entity relationship model to break a view into entities, which consists of closely related data columns, which are stored as the columns in a table. And we can also use this concept to understand and describe the relationship between the various entities in our database. Frequently, we use some sort of diagram which will imply the organization of each table and the relationships between tables. In this case, we have a single table which has yet to be normalized. So let's start to normalize our invoice table. In most cases, normalization requires breaking down existing unnormalized tables into two or more tables and identifying the relationships between the various tables and entities. The first normal form requires that each table have a primary key that allows each row to be uniquely identified. The current data violates this rule because the key is repeated and does not uniquely identify each row. We fix this by noting that pet name, procedure, and amount are really parts of another entity, kind of a line item. And so we're going to separate this out as pet invoice. We can use the invoice number and the pet ID as a way to identify each pet's line item on an invoice. I do see that DD has two entries, but we'll deal with that later. The other first normal form rule requires us to ensure that we only have one set of values per column. Notice the customer field for name, and it has three parts, a salutation, a first name, and a last name. But it still meets the first normal form because it's a single entry, a customer name. So here are the tables required to support our invoice view organized in the first normal form. Each table now has a primary key that allows each row to be uniquely identified. In the case of the pet invoice table, we are using two fields to create a unique primary key. There is only one set of values for each column. The table structure supports the invoice view as there is a one-to-one -one relationship between the invoice table and the invoice view. And each invoice view may include multiple entries, a many-to-one relationship from the pet invoice table. Okay, let's move to the second normal form. First off, to meet the second normal form, your data has to be in the first normal form, that is meeting all the rules for the first normal form. The second normal form, though, deals with a concept known as partial dependencies. The invoice table has a single column primary key, so this will meet the second normal form requirement for primary keys. But the pet invoice table has a composite key, one made of two columns, so we need to check for partial key dependencies. And sure enough, we find that the pet name column is only partially dependent upon the primary key because it is only dependent upon the pet ID portion alone, whereas the procedure and cost is tied to or dependent upon both the pet ID and the invoice ID. So we need to break out a pet table. Finally, notice that the invoice table has a customer name and address. And this is not really dependent on the primary key or invoice number. It's really dependent on a non-primary key column, the customer ID. The second normal form then requires that data should be broken out into a separate customer table. So here's our database tables in a second normal form. By creating a separate pet table, we dealt with the partial dependency found 
in the composite primary key. By creating a customer table, we've removed the partial dependencies where the customer name and address were dependent upon a customer ID and not really the primary key or invoice ID. So, let's see what other issues we might find in our data. So let's look at the third normal form. First, to meet the rules for the third normal form, your data must meet all the rules for both the first normal form and the second normal form. The third normal form deals with a concept known as transitive dependencies. Essentially, this means that if a non-primary key column depends on another non-primary key column, you have a transitive dependency and the table should be split apart. Notice that in the pet invoice table, the amount is really dependent upon the procedure. So this is a transitive dependency and it should re be removed to a separate table. We need to create a procedure table because amount is only dependent upon the procedure. Now take note when creating the procedure table, we need it to be in the first normal form and the second normal form so that we can get it into the third normal form. So we create a table with a primary key of procedure ID, which is a better primary key than procedure name, which is a character string. More importantly, a new issue comes clearly into focus. Pet ID is not the best candidate for the second field comprising the composite primary key in the invoice table. A new column, line item, is a much better choice. So the new primary key is invoice ID and line item, which contains the foreign key pet ID from the pet table and the foreign key procedure ID from the procedure table. This new table structure for the pet invoice table solves the potential problem that exists if a pet has two or more procedures on the same invoice. Finally, let's look at the customer table. When performing normalization, you will often come across data that meets the first or second normal form when you first examined it, but upon reflection, you recognize it should be separated. The customer address is a good example. The first normal form concept is that there should be only one set of values for each column, and it's met with this address field. But what if you wanted to create a view that listed every customer by a given city or a given zip code? It makes better sense to break out the address fields. Some database designers would have broken out a zip code field. In fact, you may have encountered database-driven applications where when you enter a zip code, the city and state are automatically filled in. You can see how a zip code table would be helpful in doing this kind of thing. The third normal form concept of transitive dependencies really means that if a column does not contribute to the description of the primary key, remove it to a separate key table. However, when normalizing data, you need to determine how tightly you are going to comply with normalization. In this case, the decision to break out the address into its component parts makes sense, but a further breakdown does not seem worth the effort. Okay, so here are our tables required to support our invoice view organized in the third normal form. Hey, we've done a pretty good job of normalizing our tables and maybe getting a grasp on database normalization. Let's talk about a few other things. Understand that normalization is a step-by-step -step process using the guidelines represented by the first, second, and third normal forms. Although the process is rules-based, there's a bit of art and individualization in database design. When normalizing data, you are going to need to determine how tightly you are going to comply with normalization. As you're striving to meet the goal of ensuring that your database operates efficiently and is organized to protect the integrity of your data. 
So let's take a moment to return to our barking lot invoice. While the unnormalized view of our data, which we started out with, would have worked to produce this invoice, our normalized data allows us to fill in each part of the invoice. You can see how data flows from the various tables in our database into a view or report. And you can see how we can utilize these values to calculate other fields in our invoice. So that's a quick introduction to database normalization. Hopefully, this should make your assigned chapter reading a bit more comprehensible to you and help you complete your proficiency and competency assessments. This video was produced by the IT faculty at the Davis Applied Technology College. Copyright 2014. All rights reserved. For additional information or permission to use this video, please contact us at www.datc.edu slash IT.